Now let's turn our attention to the so-called exponential representation of a complex number. We will see that it follows quite naturally from its trigonometric representation, but it's more concise and actually more powerful. But before we address it, we need to study quite a weird, at first sight at least, object, namely the so-called complex exponential, e to i theta. Well, how this equation should be interpreted? Because in real analysis we used to raise exponential to real powers only. As it turns out that for us the only sensible way to understand this expression on the right-hand side is to understand it in terms of a Taylor series. In real analysis, the exponential has a Taylor series with infinite radius of convergence, meaning that for any finite x, this exponential can be substituted with an infinite series. But up to now, we never dealt with complex-valued infinite series. As it turns out, the definition of convergence, the criteria of convergence in complex analysis are just copied from real analysis. Even simple things like ratio test in real analysis is transformed without any change to complex analysis. So let us formally write down the Taylor series for a complex exponential. Now the ratio test tells us that if the modulus of a n plus 1 over a n as n tends to infinity is smaller than 1, then the series converges. In our case, this test gives us z over n modulus as n tends to infinity, which simply gives 0 for all finite z. And that means that our complex exponential can indeed be interpreted as its Taylor series for any finite theta. So let's write it down. And now, to better understand the structure of the Taylor series, let's write down like its first six terms. So we obtain 1 plus i theta minus theta squared by 2 factorial minus i theta cubed by 3 factorial um, plus theta to the power of 4 by 4 factorial plus i times theta to the power of 5 over 5 factorial and so on. And now let's combine the real and imaginary part of this equation. So the real part now reads 1 minus theta squared by 2 factorial plus theta to 4 over 4 factorial and so on. The imaginary part is combined into something different, theta minus theta cubed over 3 factorial plus theta to 5 over 5 factorial and so on. But now in the real part of this expression you immediately recognize a cosine Taylor series while a quick glance at our imaginary part tells us that it's nothing but a sine theta. And this way our complex exponential e to i theta is reduced to a cosine theta plus i sine theta for any real theta. And this is the celebrated Euler's identity. Now let's recall that our complex number can always be represented using its trigonometric form, like modulus of z times cosine theta plus i sine theta. But using Euler's identity, now we can convert it into simply modulus of z times e to i theta. This way the multiplication and division of complex numbers becomes an almost trivial operation, like z1 times z2 is turned into the modulus of z1 times modulus of z2 times e to i theta1 plus theta2. The same goes for the division. Even more, if we recall that cosine and sine function are 2 pi periodic, we immediately obtain that our complex exponential is also 2 pi periodic. Indeed, e to i theta plus 2 pi i n is equal to cosine of theta plus 2 pi n plus i sine theta plus 2 pi n, which is simply e to i theta. Now let's derive one more beautiful consequence of an Euler identity. Let's write it down, switching theta to minus theta. e to minus i theta is equal to cosine of minus theta, which is cosine of theta, plus sine of minus theta, which is minus sine of theta, so minus i sine theta. And we immediately see that summing up Euler's identity for positive and negative angles, we obtain the expression for cosine theta, which is half of the sum of e to i theta and e to minus i theta. And subtracting them, we obtain the formula for a sine function.
And of course, the same simple rules are applied to hyperbolic trigonometric functions. We see that cosine hyperbolic of i theta simply coincides with cosine theta, while sine hyperbolic of i theta is equal to sine theta over i. And that completes our first discussion of Euler's identity and exponential representation of a complex numbers. In the next video, we'll study much more examples and even address uh, complex algebraic equations. Mm -hmm.